there. Good morning. I guess that was the official bell. Gene is out of town. I guess he's out. Anyway, he just asked if I would take class this morning. So uh, he was supposed to teach for three more weeks, and then Daryl's going to teach on Romans for a while. And then I think Tom is coming in after that. Did you, did you ever agree to that? You have now. <laughs> So, no, if that works, if you want to come in on that, that'd be about four or five weeks. Uh, there was somebody else that wanted to, to teach, and I can't remember who that, anyway, if you would like to teach three or four weeks, we'd love to have you come into rotation and everything. So, we're glad you're here this morning, are there prayer requests before we start? I... Uh, Texted Marge, to sent a text to Marge this morning and just asked if I could share any update about Jim and I'm just going to read what she sent. Um, he is no better, still eats a little liquid only, cannot get up on his own and take, uh, he needs help from people to get up. He does feed himself and holds a cup to drink out of, don't really... Uh, know what to say at this point. Four people tried yesterday to get blood for the lab, but they couldn't draw blood. And uh, she just saying it, it'll take, take a miracle for him to be what he was three months ago. So he is in decline and uh, we need to remember Jim and Marge in our prayers. Uh, there are several others that uh, I'd like to pray for this morning. Are there any other prayer requests? The, uh, yes, Ginger. Bob Berry. Okay, all right. Anyone else? Yeah. All right. That good deal. That, that is, uh, Jeanette O'Claire said her daughter-in-law celebrates one year of uh, sobriety, right, today. That's great. We, uh, we're thankful for that. That's been a long journey. So that is good news. It's Shauna. Uh, all right, we'll do. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's pray together. Our heavenly Father, we are thankful for your blessings, and we're thankful for your love for us, and for the grace that touches us every day. Father, we are thankful that uh, Shauna is celebrating a, a year of, of sober, being sober today, and uh, we pray that we would reach out to her and just uh, touch her through you, and Father, we, that you would be honored and glorified by what's happening. We're thankful for Dennis and Jeanette and for, uh, for Darrow and for the influence they've had with her. And we pray your blessings on her as she continues to walk with you. Father, we'd ask that you would be with Bob Berry, that uh, Ginger's brother-in-law, he's very ill at this time, and you know what's best for him and the family, and we pray that, uh, that uh, you would meet their needs. Father, we, uh, we pray for Jim and Marge, we pray for Leonard and Carolyn, and for, for Larry and Carolyn, for Larry and Glenda, and for Britt and Jenny, for Sid and Thelda, and for Leroy folks, and Father, uh, some of them are just very ill at this time, and we, we pray a special blessing, not only on them, but also for the caregivers. Father, uh, 
for some of them have been walking this walk and fighting this battle for a long, long time. We just ask today that you give them an extra measure of patience that uh, you'd help them to know that you're with them in, in the journey. Father, we're thankful for Jesus. and We're thankful that because of your grace and because we're forgiven of our sins through your blood, that someday everything's going to be a lot, lot better. Someday we'll see you face to face. Father, we look forward to that day. Forgive us our sins in Christ's name. When I uh, started insurance school 52 years ago, one of the, we were taught, I shouldn't give away my trade secrets, never mind. One of the closing points in a, in a sales deal at, at, at that time was, is we asked if people knew what the difference between a grouchy old man and a, and a kind gentleman. If, if a person looked at somebody and they said, well, he's an old grouch, or he's a very kind gentleman, or that someone would say, well, she's a grouchy old lady, or, and, or someone would say she's a very kind elderly woman. And the answer to that question, the difference was, is they had a lot of money. And that may be true, but I've seen, I've, seen a, I've seen rich people that were old grouches. And I've seen poor people that were kind gentlemen or, or kind lady. And it was a few years after that that it, I determined that, that may be true, but the main reason that we can look at a person's life and say that's a kind elderly gentleman and that's a kind elderly woman is because they have Jesus. And that's the difference. And those people I just prayed for and especially the caregivers that have fought the fought for a long, long time, without Jesus they have nothing. We need to remember those people and uh, just encourage them as, t as time goes on. And as the days continue to mount on more days and more days. And, uh, some of those people will be here this morning for worship service and just give them a hug this morning. And tell them you appreciate them and appreciate uh, them taking care of their spouses. It means a lot to them. Joy and I have a personal prayer request. Our youngest granddaughter, Kate, is leaving for Los Angeles in the morning to go work with the homeless. She's uh, going to be gone for a week. Uh, I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, I appreciate her heart and wanting to go there to help, but I'm a little concerned about it. And if you would remember Kate in your prayers tonight, that you would... God would be with her and her group, and especially as they work with the homeless in downtown Los Angeles. I've got some exciting news this morning. Look, at, in 290 days, you know what's going to happen in 290 days? Huh? Uh, Gloria said election day. No, you're off about five weeks. 290 days, Christmas Day. Aren't you excited? Christmas Day is only 290 days away. Do what? <laughs> he, Norman said, wow, I thought he said bah humbug is what I thought he said. I got to think about that the other day. I, I like the idea of Christmas. I really do. I, I like the idea. And uh, I got tied up in the traffic on Garth Brooks the other day, and it got, I don't know, it brought back memories. They start putting up all the Christmas decorations in the park. It seems like now they start in May. 
but it, I don't know how, it takes forever for them to get them up, but, and there's something about that that, that gets me excited, and the Christmas lights, the Christmas carols, and people seem to be a little nicer to each other until you're at the post office standing in line for 15 minutes, or you're at Walmart trying to get checked out, and anyway, you know that story. Christmas is an exciting time, and I like the idea of Christmas, but I told Joy that, you know, I've decided I really like the idea of Christmas, but I don't want to participate. I'm tired of it. I, I just don't want to get involved in it anymore. And then that thought stayed with me, and you know me well enough to know that I think weird. And then it, I got to thinking, I like the idea of Christianity. I really do. I like the idea of Christianity. But I don't want to participate. What's wrong with that thing? Norman said that means I don't care what's going to happen to me after this life. Or what, Gloria? There's no commitment. Somebody else. I don't have God in my life. Nothing happened. Norman said he has a brother-in-law that he talked about, talked to about Jesus and wanted to know what happens after you die. And he said, you're just like a dog. You're, you're just like Rover. You're dead all over. Is it, is it that I'm not concerned about what happens to my soul? And not only that, is there, is there a non-concern for what happens to you? I like the idea of people being nice to each other, and I like the idea of serving a, a risen Savior. I like that idea. I mean, I, I think about that, and I stand in awe that someone would to go through a brutal death, and at that time, there was probably worse ways they could have been put to death. You read some history, I better as soon be crucified on a cross as I had put in boiling oil. Uh, there's there's a lot of ways they could have died, but but the cross w was a symbol of, of in, in, in Matthew and in Luke, if you're going to follow me, you take up your cross daily and follow me. But but the idea of someone dying on a cross for me, I like that idea. But am I willing to participate to the point that I share that with someone else? Am I willing to give up what I believe, what I think, and what matters to me in order that life is a little bit easier, your Christian walk is a little bit easier for you? And I put myself to the test the other day, and I'm not going to tell you whether I pass or fail, but let's go to Luke chapter 10 for an example. Luke chapter 10. Now, this is right after Jesus had sent out the 70 and they come back and, and, and they talk about everything good that had happened and Jesus makes the comment that I saw Satan fall from heaven because of the mighty works you were doing. But he said, don't take pride in the fact that you were able to do all these things, but take pride in what? Your names are where? Your names are written in heaven. And Jesus reminds them that their names are written in heaven. They went out two by two, and he sends out the 70. And they make this statement, and they talk about the happy results. And then 23, turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are your eyes, which you, 
see the things you see. For I say to you that many prophets and things wish to see, for many kings wish to see the things which you see and did not see them, and to hear the things which you hear but did not hear them. And then this lawyer stands up, and I, I have an appreciation for attorneys. But this lawyer was, was he, he might have, there's a, there's a lot of different commentary on this. This could have been a lawyer that would settle law disputes concerning the Mosaical law, not Roman law. If a person had a disagreement, they would come to, to a lawyer that was given in and very expertise in the law of Moses. And they would settle the agreement, the, their disagreement with that lawyer instead of going before a Roman court. But this lawyer asked the question, and a lawyer stood up and put him to the test saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, he didn't answer his question. Note, he, he, he deflects the question with another question. He says, what is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor is yourself. And if you put the passages from Deuteronomy and Leviticus to, together, you would come up with that conclusion. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and your neighbor is yourself. But I couldn't find a passage in the Old Testament where the law was given strictly in that order. But you put Leviticus together and with De Deuteronomy, and you come up with that conclusion. So he knew the law. He knew the Mosaical law. And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But wishing to justify himself, he said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Why would you do that? Wishing, what does that mean? Wishing to justify himself. What does justify mean? If, uh, well, I'm sorry. To make it, it it's to settle things. It, if, if, if something is here and something is here, to make that justified, you, you bring this down a little bit, this up a little bit, and it's on equal. And he's wanting to, and another, what else is he asking? All right, it, and he asked the question, who is my neighbor? And Gloria, you said what? How many, where is that line? Where is the line? Who is my neighbor? Where, where, and like, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, okay. And Jesus, knowing what he was thinking, and the reason he was asking the question, he gives this parable. Verse 30, Jesus replied and said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers. And they stripped and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance, a priest going down on that road, and when he had saw him, he passed by to the other side. Who was a priest? The, 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 the priest in this situation would have been a man of God and like the lawyer, if, if the priest was a man of God and would be the one that would offer sacrifice for your sins, he would have been one that would have known the law. He would have been one that would have known the Mosaical law that it, it, in, in feeding people, taking care of people, taking care of the poor, taking care of the sick, that you take care of people. He would have known that. And not only that, he would have been in the Jewish hierarchy, he would have been the highest of the high that should have known 
that you take care of people. Now, why would the priest not have gone over and, and uh, taken care of the man? He, he, he what? Uh, and, and Gloria goes back to, they couldn't touch a dead body after a, a, they would have to go through the cleansing process and all that, and that is one theory that maybe that's the reason he didn't go over. Leroy? All right, and, and Leroy makes another point. Uh, the Samaritan, it was a, it, it was a, well, th in this situation, this was a fellow Jew, maybe. It's later we get, does it say a Samaritan? Yeah, it's a fellow Jew. It's later it's talked about this. But he sees this guy laying there, and, and it says he, he was going by, but he deliberately, my words, not in the text, he deliberately crosses to the other side of the road. What is that? What does that show? Lack of care. Just like I said, I like the idea of Christianity, but I don't want to participate. Glenna said he didn't want to do it because of what it would cost him. And it, it, there is a possibility it, he could have become unclean. He could have, there, there's, there's reasons there. But, but the example of a, of a priest knowing what he should do and deliberately going to the other side of the road, there's some other thinking, if the robber had robbed him, they could have been waiting on other people to show up to help him. He would have been, there are a lot of different reasons. But then uh, this Levite comes by. Who's the Levite? Likewise, 32, likewise the Levite also when he came to the place and saw him pass on the other side. Who were the Levites? They would have been a priest helper. They, the priests were from, from the, the heritage of Aaron. The Levites were from, from Levi. They would have been right underneath the, the, the priest in their technical order. The Levi, the Levite should have known what to do also. But what does it say he did? Likewise, the Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side also. Now, who's listening to this story? The lawyers listening, and who else? All the disciples, the people who wanted to follow Jesus, he has a Jewish audience. And what do you think, if you would have been there, and you would have been from the Jewish heritage, and you, your priest and your Levite, had walked by this injured man, knowing they should have helped him, what is, what's going through your mind? What in the world is wrong with my religion? I'm supposed to follow the example of these two guys? And you're telling me that when, when trouble comes, the first thing they do is bail out? What's wrong with this picture? Who am I following? But that is no different than when you profess to be a Christian and I profess to be a Christian and our neighbors are watching us and we have an opportunity to serve the good of our mankind and we cross to the other side of the road, what, uh, what's the first thing our neighbor thinks? And they call themselves Christian? You don't care about anyone but yourself. You're not willing to get involved, you're not willing to participate, but you profess to be a lover of Jesus 
And it's been a long time. Your neighbor said it's been a long time since I've been to church, but I remember Sunday school about how, how they taught me how Jesus loved everybody, and if we're going to be like Jesus, we have to love everybody. And we see people in trouble, and we walk by the other side, and then we continue to call ourselves Christians. That is no more right than the high priest or the Levite saying, I'm a man of God, but I'm not willing to get involved. I like the idea, but I don't want to participate. No different. Yes. Okay. Where were you at that time? In Boston? Then he tells a story, confess your faults one to another. She tells a story, she was in Boston for a conference and the traffic was horrible and said there was an elderly lady trying to get across the street and she was having a difficult time, and, and instead of going over and helping her, I just stood there and watched her. Now, then he's choked up right now after telling that story. But she said, I've never got over the fact that I could have helped that lady, and I didn't. That is a modern day, Denny, I appreciate you sharing that, but that is a modern day priest Levite example. Right, right. And Law said that he's had heard it said that if you're not going to live up to it, take that bumper sticker off of your car. I like the idea of Christianity, but don't ask me to participate. Don't ask me to get involved. I like the idea of coming here, singing a few songs, drinking some grape juice, taking the bread, and I like that. But don't ask me to get involved in anything else. You're asking way too much of me if you ask me to do anything else other than that. And then Jesus goes on to tell about verse 33, but a Samaritan. Who were the Samaritans? And they, they, were, they were part Jew and part Samaritan. After they had been in captivity, they intermarried. Samaritans came out of that. And in, is it in John 4, the Samaritan woman, Jesus goes, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even talk to Samaritans. But in, in this example, talking to a Jewish audience who would have hated Samaritans, Jesus uses the example, he just uses the priest and the Levite who should have been at the very highest point of, of their thinking, we stand in awe of this leadership. And then he goes, he, he changes directions and goes and talks about a person that they would literally have disdain for a Samaritan and here and you know the story but Samaritan was on a journey came up uh, came upon him and he saw him and he felt what compassion it's it's very you can help people out of duty. You can help people because you're commanded to. But when we help people, it goes a whole lot further when we do it with compassion, when we care. 
instead of saying, I like the idea of Christianity, but I don't want to get involved. I love the idea of Christianity. How can I get involved? How can I participate? And this Samaritan goes over in 34, and he come upon him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him, him on his beast, on beast, brought him to the inn and took care of him. And the next day, he spent the night there. And on the next day, he took out two denarii, which were in two days of wages, and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And the lawyer said, the one who showed mercy toward him. Then Jesus said, go and do the same. Who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? Norman said, it's anyone who needs help. Who are we in the story? Are we more like the priest? More like the Levi? Are we more like the Samaritan? Or sometimes are we more like the lawyer? Just tell me what, just tell me the basics of what I need to do. Just, just tell me enough so I can get by. I don't want to get totally involved in this situation. Just, just tell me enough so I can get by. So that when that scroll's open, there will not be a blemish on e any page and everything I've ever done that's good will all be written down. And just, just tell me, give me the easy way out. And then I'll get involved. Let's contrast to who is my neighbor. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Who is my neighbor? Matthew chapter 5. Of course, we refer to this as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said in verse 38, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, do not resist the evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him I ask of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. 43, you have heard it said that love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And like the lawyer, I want to ask then, I don't want to know who, my enemy, who, who, my, who is my neighbor, I don't, who's my enemy? Who's my enemy? I want to do just enough to slide in on that side of grace so that when it comes my time, nothing can be held against me because I didn't do right by my enemy. Okay, all right, Lord, if, if a person slaps me once, I'll turn my cheek. Here, if, if that made you feel good, here, try this one more. Go ahead. But don't ask me to do that more than once. What did Peter ask Jesus? How many times shall I forgive a person? Seven times? What did Jesus tell him? Now you're talking about more than involvement. You want me to tolerate this insensitivity, gets on my nerves all the time.
you, you want me to, Lord, do you, do you know what you're putting me through asking me? And I've already given this guy a set of clothes once. And now he's, he's taking me to court because I won't. What did Jesus say? He wants your shirt. Go ahead and give him your coat. It's what? Hard. Hard, hard teaching. That, that's here, here in the name of Jesus you can have anything I have if it's going to help you draw closer to Jesus yes Daryl right Daryl quotes the scripture that you say that you love God, but you hate man. How can you possibly love God who you have not seen, but you hate the person that you have seen? How is that possible? Who is, who, who is my, where do I? Lord, define it for me, and I'll follow it. But don't ask me, the only thing I really understand about this passage, he, he makes the statement, if a person asks you to go, go one mile, you go with him too. And my understanding is under Roman law, a Roman soldier could come up to you, and he's carrying his luggage, he's coming home from war, and he's carrying his luggage, and he, tell, he pulls you out of a crowd and says, here, to carry my bag. By law, you had to carry the bag one mile. That was the Mosaic law. But Jesus says, you show that Roman soldier that Jesus lives in you, and instead of carrying it one, you carry it two. And that guy's going to say, why in the world did you do this? And he said, I serve a risen, I serve a, my father, not a risen savior at that time, but I serve Jesus whom I love deeply and who loves me deeply, and if you'll give him a chance, he will love you deeply, and therefore I'm going to carry your baggage too. I understand that. I used to be able to walk two miles without breathing. I don't know whether I could walk two miles now or not. I might. But this thing of turning your cheek or taking... If he asks for your coat, you give him your shirt also. That's a hard teaching. Oh, Jesus, I want, I want to be like you, Jesus. I like the idea of Christianity. But you're asking way too much now. You're asking way too much. I'm willing to give a little, but I'm not willing to change. Don't, don't ask me to do that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know whether I can do that or not. Now, now Norm... <laughs> Norm... <laughs> Norman made the comment, if a guy sues me for five thousand, I'm to give him ten. You just really stepped all over my toe there. In the name of Jesus and for the cause of Christ. If you're willing to follow me, you want to follow me, you take up your cross daily. You deny yourself and take up your cross daily. Sometimes those crosses that we have to bear are going to be nearly unbearable. But for the cause of Jesus.
Right. Gloria said there shouldn't be any limit on, on what you're willing to do to serve Jesus. He didn't put a limit in it, on it. He gave, he gave himself. Let's look at one other passage. Verse 46 says, For you love those who love you, what reward is that? Do you not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brother, what more, do, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Let's go to Matthew 7. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. 21, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons? In your name perform many, many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you practice lawlessness. That sounds like an awful harsh teaching. But Lord, remember the, remember the time I... I I gave extra. We were kind of hurting and things were really tight, but the church where we attended, they were struggling and they needed extra income in order to, to pay some, some bills. And I, I did some sacrifice. I, I gave a little extra. Lord, don't you, don't you remember the time that I, I went out of my way to, to do something. I mean, I was really, really busy, but I took time out of my busy schedule, and, and, and I went over and did some things for some people, and uh, Lord, don't you... I don't, I don't understand this passage, but I think one thing that's talking about is these, per, these people who can prophesy and cast out demons and all that, he said... You'll say to me in that day, but didn't we do all these things? And he said, depart from me because you work lawlessness. It was all because you were given the gift in order to do that, and you participated in that, but your heart was never in it. It was never about giving yourself. It was about giving away what I had given you. You didn't give anything of yourself. That's when Christianity is tougher. When I have to give up myself to serve others. Oh, I love the idea of Christianity. But I really don't want to participate. Bob? Tomorrow. All right.
Appreciate that, Bob. So, uh, Gene will be back next week. I don't know. I I like the idea of Christmas, but I, I did. I, I I don't want to participate. And then. I need uh, oil. And right, so I. Right. Well, and I appreciate that, Lord. I, I, this is the first time we need to pray for their sponsors who are taking them to taking a bunch of seventeen and eighteen year olds to downtown Los Angeles to work with the homeless would be extremely stressful for me. Uh, but anyway, we would appreciate your, your prayers of concern for her and for her safety. So, Norman? Just to clarify that last passage, I think, okay. I think what happened here, these people said they did this, they did that, and they were trying to buy the thing. Okay. Nor Norman said that that last passage, when he said, "But didn't we didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons?" And he's going to say, "Depart from me, and I never knew you. You work lawlessness." Norman's understanding of that passage is that they never gave it themselves. It, 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 they were trying to buy their way into heaven. It was based on look at everything I've done, and and I think that's that. When we depend on our self to go to heaven, but by His grace, it's what He has already done. It's not what we will... I'm done. <laughs> it's not what we will do, and it's not what we have done. Or It's what He's already done. We are saved by His grace, but we are called to give ourselves up in his service. I love the idea of Christianity. And may God make us all better servants in his kingdom. Thank you.